let's do this one. It's at the outermost level. This is a quotient rule, right? So we're going to start off by doing quotient rule. But later on, when we come to do this bottom derivative, we're going to have to use chain rule. Now we have to make a decision. Do we want to keep the square root sign or do we want to change it to a power of a half? I think we should maybe just change it to a power of a half. We could really, we could do it without doing that, but I think when you start off, it's easier to change the root signs into fractional powers. So let's begin. We're going to start off with quotient rule. To do the derivative of this, you know, how do we do that? The derivative of the top here is 1 times the bottom left alone minus the top left alone times the derivative of the bottom. And here's where chain rule comes in. To do the chain rule here, it's kind of like something to the power of a half. How do we do so the derivative of something to the power of a half? We bring the half to the front. We ignore the stuff in the brackets. We do a half minus 1. Uh, not 1 minus a half, right? It's a half minus 1. What is a half minus 1? It's negative 1 half. And then we multiply by the derivative of what we ignored. And what are we ignoring? x squared plus 1. And then we square the bottom. The square of this, well, when I square a power of a half, the 2 times a half gives me 1. So it's really x squared to the power of 1, or just x squared plus 1. I guess I don't even need those brackets. When I square a root, it's like the square and the root, they cancel each other off, and I'm just left with the thing underneath the brackets. So there we are. Um, now, this is just uh, 2x, right? I'm just going to be a little bit lazy here. So I and uh, yeah, just copy this here. And what I'm going to do is change this. The derivative of x squared plus 1 is just 2x. So there we are right now. Um, so that's fine. Let me just clean that up a little bit. Let's keep going. We need The derivative is now done. We just need to simplify this. Um, I think what we should do is, well, first of all, this 1 is not doing anything. This half and this 2, they cancel each other off. So let's make those change, little changes. You know, the, the x here and the x there, we can write that as x squared. So minus x squared times x squared plus 1 to the minus 1 half. And it's still all over x squared plus 1. Now here's where we can do a little bit of factoring. Notice we have x squared plus 1 here and here. Here it's to the power of a half. Here it's to the power of negative 1 half. The trick is we always want to factor to the front the power that's the smallest. In this case, negative 1 half is the smallest, right? Of course, negative 1 half is smaller than half. So we pull that to the front. And uh, let's just use some square brackets here. What do we have left over? Well, let's think about that. What do you multiply x squared plus 1 by to get x squared? Sorry, what do we, if you have x squared plus 1 to the negative 1 half, what do you multiply that by to get x squared plus 1 to the positive half? Well, the way to think about that is it's going to have to be, the bases have to be the same. They both have to be x squared plus 1. And you know when you multiply two powers like that, you add the exponents, right? So what do you add to negative 1 half to make it into positive 1 half? Well, if you think about it, it's, it's 1, right? Negative 1 half plus 1 is positive 1 half. And really, if it's to the power of 1, we don't even have to write anything, do we? So that's kind of nice. It's just x squared plus 1 with no power on it at all. Now we have to think about over here now. We have minus x squared. What about x squared plus 1 to the minus 1 half? Well, we factored that to the front. So that's just uh, minus x squared now. It's just like it, this is gone. And then the bottom is just x squared plus 1. So this step here, maybe this is the tricky one. Okay, You have to understand... This it's pretty important. Uh, it's maybe a little bit, if you're not used to factoring, this might be a little bit challenging, but please convince yourself that this top, this numerator, is equal to this numerator. 
One way to maybe do it is try to multiply it back. If you were to multiply this times this and this times this, do you convince yourself that you really do get back to there? Okay, so uh, one second here. Let me erase these lines. We're pretty much done. We, what we can do maybe is this power of negative one half here, let's bring it to the bottom level. So we'd have uh, x squared plus one from before, and then x squared plus one to the minus one half. It doesn't matter what side we put it on, but now it becomes a positive half. What about what happens here? Look, we have x squared minus x squared, so those actually just go away. And uh, we just are left with one. Now, this is there's a really a power of one here, so we can combine these into a single a single power by adding the exponents. So we'd have x squared plus one. One plus a half is three halves, right? And there's our answer.